What's up guys? In this video, what I wanna do is tackle three different complex fractions that you absolutely need to know because this is going to approach our most basic understanding of simplifying complex fractions. So let's go and take a look at this first example. And you can see that I have a lot of fraction bars, right? I have one, two, three fraction bars. And a lot of times when students first see a problem like this, it just becomes overwhelming. So the main thing I want you to look at is this big fraction bar here. Right. And again, remember all a fraction bar really represents is division, right? We could also just rewrite this using this division symbol. And that's really important because sometimes looking at a problem like this, when it's overwhelming, I just like tell students to, why don't we just go ahead and rewrite this as a division problem using the division symbol. And now hopefully you see that, oh, it's really just a division of two fractions, right? And remember the easiest way to be able to divide a fraction by another fraction is just to multiply by the reciprocal. So in this example, it would look like this. And in this example, we don't really need to go through all this work. I was just really doing that so you can have a visual understanding. But in this case, what we can do is simply just multiply by the reciprocal in the numerator as well as in the denominator. Okay, now the reason why I multiplied in the numerator as well as in the denominator is because we have to create what we call equivalent fractions. Whatever I multiply in the numerator, I have to also multiply in the denominator to keep my fraction equivalent, right? And again, we have this huge rational function we're trying to keep equivalent. So it's a really important that you make sure you do that in both. Now, here's the main thing I really want you to understand about this problem. What I'm doing when I multiply by the reciprocal in the denominator, look, everything is going to go ahead and divide to one, right? So when we're multiplying by the reciprocal, what we're basically doing is getting this denominator equal to one. Then you can see this multiplication problem really up here is really the same thing that I have going on over here. Now, remember when you're multiplying rational expression, you're just basically just multiplying your numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. And one of the easiest ways to understand as far as simplifying everything is really just to write it as one big rational expression. So you can see in this example, what I did is I just put parentheses around things just to remember that I'm actually multiplying the expressions times the expressions. I didn't want to use the multiplication symbol because sometimes we'll forget then it's an expression times another expression, not just the terms within. Now, the last thing we need to do is just go ahead and simplify this. And remember, whenever we have terms that are separated by multiplication, then we can apply what we call the division property. Basically what it says is whenever we have something in the numerator and the denominator, that's exactly the same that is separated by multiplication, we can divide them. So you can see that X plus Y times two X plus Y and X plus Y times two X minus Y. See how these expressions are exactly the same and they're separated by multiplication. We can go ahead and divide them out. However, please don't make a mistake. A lot of students say, oh, well the two X and the two X are the same, right? But again, two X is not separated by multiplication with another term. Yes, you could say two and the X are separated by multiplication, but again, the whole expression is being added or subtracted with Y. So therefore we simply cannot divide these out. Even though these terms are the same, they're not separated by multiplication like the X plus Y. So therefore our final answer in this example is going to be a two X plus Y over a two X minus Y. Okay, now in this example, we have multiple denominators and multiplying by the reciprocal is not really gonna go much help us because you can see there in our denominator, we have our two rational expressions that are gonna be separated by addition. So there's a couple ways you could do this. You could go ahead and add these together and then you would have a fraction over a fraction, right? Because if you combine two rational expressions, you're gonna get another rational expression. So that is definitely a way that you could do this. However, I would like to approach these problems a little bit differently. And the way that I like to approach them is getting rid of the division symbols. Because again, you can see, look how many division symbols we have. One, two, three, four. In my opinion, that is just way too many. So what I like to do is get rid of dividing. If you notice in the last example, how did we get rid of dividing? We got rid of dividing by multiplying by the reciprocal of what was in the denominator. Now in this example, we're not going to do exactly the same approach, but it's going to be very much related. What we want to do is multiply by the least common denominator. And the reason why we want to multiply everything by the least common denominator is because our denominators are all going to divide evenly into that term. Now again, remember, just like in the first example, whatever we do in our denominator, we have to do in our numerator, right? We have to make sure we're creating an equivalent fraction. So the first thing we need to do is identify the least common denominator. Okay, now to do that, what we want to do is look to see if our denominators can be simple. And in this case, we have an X plus five, X minus three, and another X plus five. Well, there's really nothing I can do to go ahead and simplify them. So the easiest and quickest way to understand finding the LCD when your denominators cannot be simplified is just to go ahead and find the product. Now I don't need to multiply X plus five times an X plus five twice. It already shows up once. So therefore my LCD is just going to be an X plus five times an X minus three. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to multiply my whole fraction in the numerator as well as the denominator, basically each and every term by this LCD x plus five times x minus three. Now it's gonna look pretty confusing. So what I'm gonna do is write it out as a product times each and every one of the terms.
Okay, now definitely the more familiar you get with simplifying complex fractions, the less work you're gonna have to show each and every time. But it's just very important, I want you to understand that once you've identified this LCD, it's to multiply times each and every one of these terms, right? We have to create that equivalent fraction. That's one of the biggest mistakes that students will make. Now we need to understand that this LCD, our denominator better divide evenly into this LCD. Like let's go and take a look at this numerator here. In this case, we have X plus five, right? So it's three times X plus five times X minus one divided by the X plus five, right? Well, again, you can see these X plus fives can just go ahead and divide out. And again, they're separated by multiplication. That's why we can apply that division property. And the same thing works over here, right? You can see in this case, my X minus threes are gonna divide out. And in this case, we can see the X plus fives are gonna divide out. Everything is separated by multiplication. Now let's just go ahead and kind of clean up what we have left. So the first thing we have is we have a three times an X minus three in the numerator. And then over here, we have a two times an X plus five, and then plus a one times an X minus three. So I'm not gonna write the one, I'm just gonna write this X minus three. Now we can just go and apply a distributive property and go ahead and distribute. And then we're gonna wanna do is combine like terms. So I have a three X minus nine all over a two X plus 10 plus X minus three. And now we can just go ahead and simplify and combine like terms here. So th numerator is gonna be good, three X minus nine. And then over here, we're gonna have a two X plus X, which is going to be a three X, and then one minus three is going to be a minus two. Now you can go ahead and simplify this a little bit closer. You could go ahead and factor out the three if that is something in your directions of a test or a quiz or your homework. So you can factor out that three and then you'd be like an X minus three all over a three X minus two. All right, now in this example, you can see we actually have five fractions. We have one, two, three, four. Now some students say, well, you just said five. Where'd five come from? Anytime you have an integer, you can rewrite that as a fraction. And that's really important to understand when we're simplifying these complex fractions. Remember, we want to write any kind of integer as a fraction because to simplify this, we want to get the X and the Y off of the denominator. Now, again, we have so many fractions. There are two ways we could do this. We could subtract these fractions in the numerator and we could add these two in the denominator and then to get a fraction over a fraction, which then we can multiply by the reciprocal. But again, I like to approach this by using the LCD method because I like getting rid of what's in the denominator. So again, we need to find that least common denominator, the LCD, to multiply by each and every one of these terms to create that equivalent fraction. So in this case, what I'm going to do is, again, look to see, can I simplify anything? And thankfully, these are some basic problems, so there's going to be no simplifying from the start. So therefore, the easiest way to understand to find the LCD is just to go ahead and multiply your denominators. Now again, I want you to recognize something. I have an X and a Y, and I have an XY, which is already the product. So therefore my LCD is just gonna be the X and the Y. It's not gonna be an X squared and a Y squared. We already have an X and a Y, and that is going to be the smallest multiple that X and Y divides into. Now, since this LCD requires a little bit less work, what I'm simply gonna do is I'm just gonna multiply now everything times X, Y, and I'm just gonna write it in the original problem. Um, hopefully you understand from the last example exactly what I did, but it's just very important that you make sure you understand I'm doing this times every single one of these terms, okay? Because again, we have to produce that equivalent fraction. Now you can see the X, Y and the X, Y are going to divide out. In this case, you can see my Y's are going to divide out. Um, in this case, nothing is going to divide out. But again, that's an X, Y in the numerator, so that's okay. Here we're going to have an X and an X are going to divide out. All right, so let's go and see what we're going to have here. Now I'm going to have a 2 minus a 1 times X in the numerator. And then in the denominator, I'm going to have a 2 X, Y plus a Y times Y, which is going to be a Y squared. Now, again, guys, if you need to go ahead and simplify this a little bit further, you do recognize that these both have a Y in common. So therefore, I can factor out a Y to give a final simplified answer of a Y times a 2 X plus Y. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, those are some basic complex fractions that you absolutely need to know to be able to understand how to simplify complex fractions. However, if you're looking for some problems that you're probably going to see on a test or quiz that you're going to need to know to be able to pass, you can go and check out that next video here. Or if you just want to go and take a look at more individual examples or what notes and resources I provide to my own students inside of my courses, go ahead and check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below. Cheers.